Today, there are two million descendants of French Canadian immigrants living in New England. These are our stories. Welcome to the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Venez tous jeunes filles et garçons, je vais vous raconter l'histoire de notre immigration ici au USA. De grands aventuriers, de pays étrangers. This is the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. I am Jesse Martineau. This week, we are very excited to welcome our guest, Lise Veronon. Lise is the Director of Community Relations and International Affairs for the Alliance Française of the Lake Champlain region in Vermont. Her main objective in this role is to identify opportunities to promote French connection. In 2012, Lise was asked by then Burlington Mayor Bob Kiss to share the newly created Burlington En Floor France Sister City Committee, which is really, really cool. And to what is a absolutely tremendous honor, Lise was recently knighted by the government of France and made a member of the French National Order of Merit. Lise, welcome to the French Canadian Legacy Podcast. Merci beaucoup. C'est un plaisir. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, where, Lise, tell us, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Mallets Bay in Vermont, but I was born in Connecticut. But my parents both came from Quebec, uh, not speaking a word of English. Uh, and so I was born in, in the United States. Now, where, where in Quebec were they from? So they were from Lac Magantic and the Montreal area. Okay, now, what brought them to the United States? Uh, so they actually both grew up on a farm. Uh, my mom's family raised fox near the Megantic uh, Lake, and my father was in St. Samuel area, La Beauce. You'll hear people talking about La Beauce. Uh, he, had been, he had been into farming for many, many years uh, as a young man, and he had traveled to Maine. He uh, okay. did some lumberjacking. He was <laughs> a Aaron Smith. Yeah, so he did a lot of different things out there, and he said, you know what? I'm going to start a family. I'm going to take them to, uh, I'm going to start a family in the United States. It was a different world and a different life to be had. So he wanted to check that out. That's pretty interesting. Now, how did you end up in Vermont then? My father and mother were traveling to Quebec, you know, maybe once, twice a month to stay connected with their family. And they found that it was too far to go from Connecticut to Quebec. So they were passing through Vermont. Uh, One of the times my father stopped at a gas station near General Electric, and the guy at the pump spoke French while he was gassing up. And he said, I'm looking for work, all in French, of course. And he says, this is what I do. He says, you know, General Electric is right here. They, they hire people to work in meteorology. We've got uh, Matt Gatlin gun where we're working on that's uh, having issues. And uh, blades from the airplanes were, were cracking in, in the midair. And they're like, we need to find people who can fix that. My father says, well, I can help you. He says, well, how am I going to do that? He says, just follow me. Literally, they walked from the gas station to GE, walked in the door, and they took him to where the, he says, show me where the furnaces are. And he says, your fire's too hot, and your metal mixture is off. I can fix that. And they hired him. That's awesome. That's a very (laughs) cool story. Now, do you still have relatives that you stay in touch with in Quebec? Absolutely, yes. Oh, that's all. Now, I'm assuming that, given your background, you grew up speaking French in the house. So only French, and that was a little difficult because uh, I was one of the oldest of uh, six kids, and so I was going to school. Again, I didn't know English because we were kind of on our own. Um, in the house, we always spoke French. My father sure. required that we speak French, but now we're going to school and everybody speaks English. So right. I pretty much learned English by going to school. Now, it's interesting because I know um, my folks, same kind of deal. Their parents demanded that they speak French in the house, uh, but they, I guess, had the benefit of going to school, uh, at least first through eighth grade, half the day in English, half the day in French, like the day uh-huh. was split. Did that not exist in no. Vermont? No, 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 that did not exist. I was in Mallets Bay, uh, Burlington and Mallets Bay is where I grew up, and neither school had French in the school. Uh, so you learn by watching people, sure. things that are on the on the Blackboard, you know, like numbers and addition, you kind of just, you know, you kind of just watch. You do a lot. I'm a very visual learner, maybe because of all that. (laughs) Now, I did see in one location, it claims, so one of your bios claims that you learned English actually from your role as Rapunzel in a school, (laughs) which I thought was homework. (laughs) I tried to. So, what is the story behind this? 
Well, actually, so by the time I was in third grade, I was okay with uh, English and my neighbors had a mom that was French and English. And so we started practicing a lot more after hours with that family speaking English. And, you know, it kind of comes to you reading and all that. But by fifth grade, the teacher goes, okay, enough is enough. You <laughs> need to go to summer school. And I was so embarrassed because I was like, oh, that must be, I'm really bad. I'm really, you know, inefficient here. I don't know what happened, but maybe it's something with the arts uh, or the mode it was so relaxing. I was asked to be uh, in that part, and I went to school the next year, and English was not a problem at all. And I, I became one of the better students in writing English, correcting English, and I don't know why, but that's what that's what worked for me. Just needed a play. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I thank that teacher, Mrs. Carney, every day. That's Thanks so to awesome. her, I'm actually where I am today. <laughs> what did the franco-american community look like in the area when you were going up Did, was there like a french church were there french franco-american french canadian organizations ah uh, so when we were in connecticut i was in connecticut for the first five years of my life i was born there and we really lived um way out in the country and yeah, so do. there weren't even any neighbors right oh, wow. yeah so we we were pretty secluded we went to church the church was in was in english but that's why we went to Canada all the time because then we go to French. So my parents knew what was going on. Um, so when I came to Vermont, um, same thing. There just wasn't there wasn't any French anywhere. There wasn't yeah. Winniski. So there was yeah. a church in Winniski and St. Joe's, and we would frequent those churches. Again, so you can see our religion kind of played a so, part there, right? Yeah. But that's absolutely. where French was heard, would be in one of those churches. We didn't have it in schools, didn't have it at the store. You know, you didn't have it in business. Gotcha. So there wasn't like the petite Canada's that you that you hear about in a lot of these places. No, no, not really. Not really. If you went to Winooski, you'd find a lot of French speaking friends and neighbors kind sure. of thing. Uh, but my parents pretty much like to keep to themselves. I think, you know, they were a little less social, I think, back then. Okay. And, and I think it had to do with the fact that they weren't comfortable themselves. My mother did not speak English until she started working in the school system That's and, be yeah and then she started learning english and then we sure. started speaking english at home more because now yeah. i was probably you know in middle school getting into high school and it's like okay it's not an issue where french and english is spoken now at home yeah, I just, <laughs> no, that makes sense no <laughs> this is awesome now i did see uh one of the pictures uh that you have with you say your daughter and a grandson yeah I'm curious that uh, uh, does your daughter or your grandson, do they speak French? Did the language last in your family? So my daughter is a huge advocate for uh, her children growing up bilingual. So when That's I'm nice. around, yep, when I'm around my grandson, Ari, I will speak French to him. Uh, but I'll speak English and French because it's one of those kind of like mix it all up kind of thing and yeah. but he knows the words he knows what it means different phrases and things we do it's not like it's a conversation we're going to have he's three years old yeah. but he um he understands a lot of the key key words and and that's good enough for now meanwhile she's teaching him other languages um you know they'll read they do spanish in school wow. and the library you know they go to library school uh, story time and um the, i do the, take them to an alliance francaise French story time. Nice. My husband takes them to the, <laughs> the Spanish. <laughs> so we split it up. No, that's very cool. Now, one question I'd like to ask a lot of our guests, because I think it's super, super interesting. I have the uh, privilege of talking to a number of people who have dedicated huge parts of their lives to promoting the French language and culture. And I'm always curious, what made you decide that this was a cause that you really wanted to dedicate so much of your life to? <laughs> Well, I think I happened to stumble on it. So what happened, what I, so I work for the city of Burlington and um, fire and police departments, but I've been with the city for a long time. And I think what happens is uh, people knew I spoke French. Sure. And so when we had some um, visitors from uh, Yaroslav, Russia coming, as part of a sister city program with Russia, uh, he did not speak English. The, the fire chief at that time did not speak English. So he said, but I speak French. So I was yes. asked to be the translator for the week. Um, and then uh, we went to Montreal, saw the 911 center. 
then I, again, friends, knew I spoke French, visitors from uh, the uh, touring uh, channel for Travel Channel for Canada in okay. Montreal was going to Shelburne Museum. And they said, can you join us at Shelburne Museum and be the translator for the film crew? Oh, that's awesome. a story on the Shelburne Museum. So I stepped up and did that. <laughs> and there's where I met the uh, president of the Alliance Francaise who happened to work there. Um, she, she did fine with translation. She just was not as comfortable doing it by herself. So sure. she was asking someone else to come. And next thing I know, she recruited me to be uh, in the Alliance Francaise. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in. Yeah, I'm in. Very and then cool. the three girls, of course, like you say, with the... Uh, Mayor Kiss at the time was uh, looking to do, uh, because of the Quad Centennial, we had done a lot of French in 2009, a lot of French connections, and he said, we need to, uh, we need to roll out that Sister City program, and Lise, would you do it for us? Would you be on that, would you chair that committee, you know, become president of the committee? And, and I said, yes. <laughs> Very <laughs> cool. Are. And we're definitely going to talk about that relationship because I think that's super, super neat, the whole sister city thing. Now, I also noticed that in 2015, uh, a different mayor, uh, Mayor Miro Weinberger, you were invited to be a speaker during the Francophone and Francophile Cities of America conference. Now, what was this conference about? So that was in Quebec City. And um, the mayor uh, of Quebec City, um, um, Boham, he reached out to say we're putting a panel together of why to have signage in French and wanted Burlington to uh, be represented. And so I was asked to go. <laughs> and so I sat on the panel. It was, uh, it was televised in Quebec, uh, actually in all of Canada. And wow. it, was an hour, it was an hour session with other panelists from like New Orleans and Moncton. So the francophone cities are sure. just the speak French cities that are known to have French speakers in them. And you know, as you know, with Maine, there's a few. So all right, of course. No, that's very neat. In the very following year, you were helped out on the Quebec Friendly Business Seminar. <laughs> I helped what was this project about? So I my thought at the time was people don't know that Alliance Francaise exists. They don't know what we can offer. So I said we need to reach out to them to say, here we are, this is what we can do. So we said, let's put on a French-friendly business seminar. And at the seminar, we had a lot of speakers come from different uh, parts of Vermont, Chamber, the Lake Champlain Chamber of Commerce, the uh, Secretary um, of Commerce, and, uh, you know, a Commissioner of Marketing. So, you know, we had a bunch of people come to speak about what, services are available and we did a little mini uh little mini french class and the people <laughs> loved it yeah they loved just saying welcome and hello sure. and, and just how simple it is to uh have businesses welcome their customers in french even if you just say bonjour you hear them speaking french sure. and you can you say bonjour entre you know come on in you that's know awesome. and and that sets the tone for a store that's like french friendly oh of course no that's really neat i like that a lot now before we get into the story on floor or the alliance Francaise, which is definitely something we need to talk about i do want to back up a little bit and talk I guess more broadly about the franco-american presence in the state of vermont um, because the story we are most familiar with here uh, i think probably most of my listeners too as, as well um, is the story of you know the fr french canadians moving from the farms to the pretty big mill towns it's like coming to manchester and lowell and lewiston woonsocket that kind of story i don't think we get the vermont story very often but being on the border i'm gonna have to assume that there are people speaking french in what is today vermont before there was the state of vermont that Am I correct on this? Yes, 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 yes. Because actually it was part of Quebec. I mean, it was part of Canada and the, the French, the new France. Gotcha. You know, actually uh, spanned down into the Vermont area. Uh, but Winooski had the mill. That's where the mills are. And uh, the river, right? So the Winooski River. And working the mill, the mills are still there. The buildings are still there. There's now restaurants <laughs> where the buildings are. But uh, people came to work the mills, and that's the article I sent you um, sure. that you, you could look into. And and that's why Winooski, I think, has so many, even today, uh, French speakers, because people, you know, stayed. And next generation, Francophone people would be living right here in Vermont. And then it's spreading, you know, of course, Montpelier, a lot of French towns, right? Montpelier, Montpellier is, yeah. is French in Montpelier. 
um, Virgin, Virgin, <laughs> and sure. one of the you know one of the smallest uh, cities in the country, but uh, has some <laughs> speakers. And we do a, we do a French event there um, whenever we can. Gather enough volunteers to do that in the Common Square. Um, but but that is really uh, what people came here. There were farmers for sure, but the working the industry part was the mills in, in Winooski. And, yeah. and I'm not the specialist in this, sure. right? so that's why I sent you the article. Yeah. Um, I don't know everything about everything, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can post the article on our social media, no question about it. I just think it's interesting because, uh, you know, th that story is, is not, it's very similar to the story we've heard about, you know, the, the Rhode Island story, the New Hampshire story, the Maine story, obviously the Lowell Fall River story. You know, it's happening in Vermont, too, which I think is important. It's very right. cool. Absolutely. There's a story, I don't know if you've heard, of Abby Page. When yeah, we talked to we talked to Abby Page. She's the oh, best. Oh well, there you go. Well, she she puts on this one person play, and a lot of us who grew up uh, French <laughs> will will identify with a lot of the scenes that she puts out in her play. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talked Real. to her on this podcast. Uh, one of the things it's it's kind of funny uh, because obviously I didn't grow up in in Vermont. But a ton of the characters that she portrayed are absolutely people I knew growing up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, I that that person right there, that that person hung out with my grandmother. Like that yeah. that there's another character that absolutely reminds me of a cousin. It was yeah. super super neat to hear that play. And she's got a new one out now, which is way way awesome. She's got a new a new play right now, which is very cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Now the uh, Alliance Francaise, we've mentioned it a couple of times. So what is this organization about? What does it do? So the Alliance Francaise of the Lake Champlain region. So the Alliance Francaise is an international uh, federal organization promoting French and French culture and French initiatives. The Alliance Francaise of the Lake Champlain region, we're really focused on classes, education. So uh, most of our revenue, and, and we're really small, we're all volunteer, volunteer teachers, volunteer organizer, board members, I'm on the board, um, but we are about putting on classes, introduce a little bit of culture here and there sure. about French culture, whether it's French from France or French Quebecois, you know, it doesn't really matter. There, there's so there's 28 countries, you know, as you probably already know, that uh, speak French. And um, so we uh, do a flag raising every year. Uh, the Enfleur Sister City and uh, Alliance Française partner together. I, I, I put it on, so kind of like in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter what hat I wear. The point is it's just letting people know these uh, opp opportunities to invite the consul generals from France and Canada you know, to come to Vermont, the governor comes, the mayor, Mayor Weinberger has been hosting for many years. So we, we use that as an opportunity to let people know about the French programs. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, now do you guys have giant uh, Saint Jean Baptiste celebrations? Yes, yes we, we did. We did. Well, well we, matter of fact, the uh, Quebec, so the Quebec government uh, in Boston actually uh, sponsored a few um, of our handouts for the marketplace. We have a French cart. Uh, information cart on the marketplace in Burlington. I don't know if you're familiar with the Burlington downtown market. Not at all. No. It's an open square. It's an open square. It used to be a street called Church Street. They closed it off, turned it into a market. It's all uh, paved, not paved, uh, but uh, paved stones. Uh, and it's, it's closed off to traffic and it's all shops. And it's very European feeling. Friends of mine who've come That's from awesome. Germany and other places will go, oh, is this is very European. They they donated buttons and flags and memorabilia that was Quebec symbols and things sure. that we could hand out. And uh, we did that on uh, on uh, St. Jean-Baptiste. We talked about En Fleur a couple of times, the Sister City Project. Now, first of all, for those who might not be familiar, where exactly in France is this city? So it's in the Normandy region. Remember the Normandy beaches? I've been, absolutely. Okay, so the Normandy region, so it's right on the on the shores. It literally is a port city, very much like Vermont is, uh, Burlington is on the Lake Champlain. They are on the ocean. Uh, the port where Samuel de Champlain uh, had sailed from it is a, a beautiful, beautiful town. A lot of art, a lot of museums. Um, and the mayor, Michel Lamar, is a great fan of Burlington and Vermont. They <laughs> made their first trip here in 2013, and we've been going back and forth ever since. 
you kind of alluded to it real quick there, but I want to make sure to point it out. Um, why was it that you targeted on floor specifically to be the sister city? Because Lake Champlain, Samuel de Champlain, Port Cities, both of us are Port Cities. Uh, we share a lot of the same interests as far as our uh, environment and, uh, you know, the farms. Just We have so much in common and the arts. Uh, so we said uh, Samuel Champlain, Quad Centennial. We made it. We made a visit to uh, En Fleur because of that, because that's the city that our lake that we share yeah. is, is between us. Right. The lake between, if you will, that that common uh, link and link with Quebec and, and uh, you know, Canada and France. So it all comes together with uh, En Fleur. Because he left from that town. Right. Gotcha. Right. When he was coming. In. That's awesome. Which is right. Really then he came over to the new France. Right. So the new and. And we were connected from from the moment he stepped foot on our grounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very. We actually have very... a statue. We have statues. Okay. Champlain. We have a college called uh, Champlain College, uh, so, and we have Saint Michael's College where the Emmendites uh, came from France. You see how it's all again from sure. the Normandy region and Mont Saint Michel, in yep. France in yep. Normandy. Again, they are the people that that started Saint Michael's College in in um, in Vermont came from there so so it was a natural place for us to go and, and become a sister city and and we've had we've not run short of ideas of things to do <laughs> make connections now, now i'm assuming uh when you got this sister city thing uh together that allowed you to uh take a visit to on floor is that what happened we did so we were barely created the city in march of 2012 uh by october 2012 we were in on fleur that's awesome. uh, with a delegation from the government representatives from Vermont, uh, from Burlington, uh, myself as the Ontario Sister City Chair, and uh, people that are volunteering on the committee, uh, former former presidents of uh, St. Michael's College. You can, so you can see how broad our group sure. was. Uh, Doreen Kraft from Burlington City Arts. So we all went as our first trip in 2012. Uh, we brought over what's called the Don de Dieu. It's the ship that Samuel yep. de Champlain uh, sailed on. We brought a replica that was made in Quebec, handmade, wood and cloth. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. And we brought it over. We, well, we, didn't, we shipped it over. <laughs> <laughs> we, had to, we had to have a crate. We, we have a, a wonderful um, partner with uh, Ernie Parmelo. He's the honorary consul to France in Vermont, for Vermont. And he, um, his philanthropy helped make some of these things happen. So awesome. we were very grateful for that. Um, anyway, so there's a ship we brought. We went over and we placed the ship of Don de Dieu in the city hall of, uh, of En Fleur. And the mayor goes, so many people that live here don't actually have not, have not actually made the connection that this is the ship that sails from this port. Wow. that we live on so mm -hmm. it's funny how we right from people from different countries know sometimes more about our own country than than we do of course and, yeah, it was same, and the same was true there so that was a really educational moment um and and we continue to try to do that we did what we sent some boy scouts over um they were going to france anyway and we connected them with the enfleur sister city and they did some some home uh stays and Played baseball and, <laughs> and even though they didn't speak English, right? I mean, they speak. They didn't speak sure. English. We didn't speak French, but they were able to play a game of baseball. So you can see that young people can figure it out. <laughs> oh, that's really neat. No, I think that's cool because I've I've been to the Normandy region, uh, but I never got to see that town specifically. So I did some research on it, and it honestly, it looked like uh, it was like a series of postcards. Oh just yeah. Just looking at the pictures. Yes. I mean, just the houses right across the water. It was absolutely beautiful. Yes. If you ever want to go, let me know. I'll connect. All right. I love that. You can hook me up. That's very cool. Now, I did want to talk, of course, we have to talk about the French National Honor of Merit, because I mentioned oh. this at the top. This is so awesome. Uh, first of all, what is, for people who may not be familiar, what is the French National Honor of Merit? So the country uh, wanted to recognize people who give time and effort to promoting French in their country. And it is a way for the French government to be able to recognize people 
like myself. I didn't know I was going to get this. Okay. This was always a surprise <laughs> to me. I just do what I do. And then people apparently reported up the chain of command for many years because you have to have 10 to 15 years of service. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think through the Alliance Francaise, through, um, through Vermont channels, uh, but the common link was the um, Consul General to France in Boston. So they changed seats over every three to five years, but what was kept was some of the reports about what was happening in Burlington and Vermont and what Lise was doing. Um, and so they tallied that all up and and uh, the, the Consul General um, had submitted my name to the chain. It takes two to three years from when your name is submitted to even process because it's gotta be vetted through all these committees and there's sure. a lot of formal, process in, in yeah, France. It's a huge deal. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, a government, it's a government process, you know, so it got vetted and um, and I received the uh, the medal. Yeah, I was going to ask if you make sure you wear it everywhere you go, because if I had that medal, there would not be a single time I ever left my house without that on my garments. <laughs> they tell me that when I travel, I should definitely wear it. And when I travel to France to to wear it. It's actually almost an obligation at this point when I'm traveling to wear it because it, it shows people that I have been recognized by the French government. And when I enter in France, people will know what it is and you, you get extra credit. <laughs> you'll get, you'll get it, um, advanced to the head of the line. You'll get a seat at a restaurant. You so awesome. Yeah. So I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity to do that. I will in, in the fall, in November, we're going to be making a trip. Um, because it's our 10 years of a relationship with En Fleur. Very so cool. So a few of us are going on that trip. That's so um, yeah, and then, and, and then anytime, that's why I brought it today, but <laughs> in a French show, I should wear it or bring it. So I, I brought it to work. I actually didn't wear it around work all day, although I could have, and people are like, why don't you? Yeah, like, should have, absolutely. <laughs> now, because one thing I, I read, which I think is really neat, that this award, uh, it goes all the way to the very top. It's got to be signed off. But yeah, to the president, president, literally. Is the one who gives the, who's the, the final say in this award. My understanding is is uh, December 27th, the Consul General happened to be with the president because they actually were friends from college. And um, he says, we got one more to, to sign off on here. And, and he signed it there and then. And that's what I got that's in great. the that's what I got sent to me here in Vermont. <laughs> so it's pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Now, how did you find out you had won? So the Consul General originally was going to present it to me personally because um, and, and, and a ceremony in Boston at the Bo French consulate. But he got asked by the president of France uh, that day to, to come and be the Consul General to France in uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Oh, wow. So his term in, in the United States was cut short by a year because they asked him to go there. So he said, uh, he gave it to me before he left, and he said, the new consul general to France taking my place. We don't know who it's going to be yet, but that is who's going to pin it on me gotcha. uh, when he comes to the United States. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what that ceremony was like? when that so, Because that's this is like the coolest thing ever to me. <laughs> it really is. So I um, normally it's done in France, and uh, it's... Uh, if not in France, it's done, it's done in the United States, it's done at the French consulate. Gotcha. So for us, for me, it would have been in Boston. But because all the people that I've worked with, that I've done sure. things, they're going to be here. And, and I've got a lot of family here as well in Burlington and the mayor. You know what I mean? The mayor and the governor yeah, no, and, and yeah. the, all these uh, heads of state and heads of or, uh, you know commissions and uh, commissions and um, uh, you know organizations. I said, it wouldn't it be nice if we could just have it here. So we did it at City Hall and oh, we cool. merged it with the International Francophone Flag Raising event. Gotcha. Um, then, um, so yeah, we must have had, gosh, 150 people. Uh, the media so cool. came and covered it, did a really nice job covering it. Um, and so the Consul General said some really nice words. <laughs> And ask me up. I think if you go to the Alliance Francaise website or you Google it, you'll see some of the ceremony photos. Um, and he pinned it on me. Um, and then I got to say thank you to the people in the room and all the people who couldn't be there. 
uh, for having helped along the way with these ideas that I come up with <laughs> that oh, I need people to help and make it happen. And then Ernie Parmelo, who's a consul general to France, also got recognized as Chevalier and knighted the same time, same day. That's such an amazing, I can't even imagine being able to walk around telling people that you've been knighted. That, I know. <laughs> like, my, my son-in-law says, here, here, so here's, your, here's a sword for your collection. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might just put one up in my office just to make yeah. sure people ask me about it so I could tell them the story. No, that's so cool. All right, no, we're winding down a little bit, but if somebody from your area wants to get more information on the Alliance Francaise of the Lake Champlain region, where would you send them? AFLCR.org. Yeah, and you, is there any the event? Acronym. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You got any events coming up that they might want to be aware of? I'm going to be going to uh, Shelburne Museum. There's a French um, magazine editor that's getting a tour. I've been asked to do the translation. And we have a French social, the third Wednesday of every month, usually at Juniper, um, here at Hotel Vermont. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Lise. This has been a lot of fun. Oh, same here. Thank you so much. I'm, it's nice to reminisce. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Now our fathers look at us and sigh with despair To think that everything they love we simply do not share But the spirit never dies, our culture will survive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Each of us must choose how much to keep alive Special thanks to Josie Vashon for providing the music. You can find more about her at josievashon.com. This podcast was produced and edited by Mike Campbell. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at fclpodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at fclpodcast for more information about the topics discussed. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this episode.